Good afternoon, this is Darren in 7HQR. This is a quick little unscripted, unedited, get on the air with your packet set up to talk through the International Space Station. So a few little quick basics before we get going on the actual packet connection. I uh, get the question all the time what packet is. It's a digital mode. Essentially, we have a terminal program which you'll see in the uh, upper part of my window here. And this is just a computer application that allows me to send whatever I type on the keyboard out a cable port, a communications port of the computer to a little black box that is known as a terminal node controller or TNC. And it is actually just a modem. And by modem, I mean it modulates and demodulates signals. So we send a string of data from our computer to that little black box. That little black box sends tones out over our radio and receive tones that come in from the radio and converts them back to something we can see on the screen. Sounds a little complex, it's not too bad. <clears throat> Gotta remember this is all done in ones and zeros because this is computer talk, so it's all in binary. So uh, a binary zero is just the, just the number zero. Remember, we only have ones and zeros to work with, so we have to add them up quickly. If we want to send the number one, it's a one. If we want to, wanted to send the code for two, that's a one and a zero. This next column becomes the two column. So the binary for the number three is 11. The binary for number four is one zero zero. That's one, four, one in the four column over here, and then nothing else. This gets real complex if you're not familiar with dealing with it, um, but it is just ones and zeros. One, zero, one means we have one in the four column, nothing in the two column, and a one in the five column. We add that up and we get the number five. So to send all the numbers, characters, lowercase characters, all this stuff we have to have a code and it's called ASCII that we use to send these things in ones and zeros over the uh, wire and then over the radio. So for example if we were going to send a 7 and a 3 the regular digits 7 and 3 110111 would be 7 and 110011 would be 3. So I know it just gets more complex and I apologize but that's the way it works now to make that happen, <clears throat> we do that with tones and kind of that come out of the modem or the TNC. So I've got a radio on monitoring. I'm just going to test real quick here. We'll do a calibrate. And there's one tone. There's the other tone. That tone means zero. That tone means one. So we send those on and off very fast, along with some other little control things in there to make them happen. And then the device on the other end decodes those two tones and determines whether it got a 0 or a 1, puts that all together, and comes up with what the digit is that we sent. This is really fun, this binary stuff, because it can be written either direction. This is written in what's called Big Endian. No, not Indian. Endian. E-N-D. I A N N D N. Yeah, big Endian. So it's read from right to left. Little Endian would look just the same, but would be read from left to right. And guess what? Both are in use in the computer business depending on the type of processor or network that you're involved with. And there is the International Space Station sound like first packet we heard. So let's go ahead and get this set up with the minimal stuff we need. We need to tell it who we are. So right now I'm in command mode. You see the CMD for command. So I am talking to the little black box. That's all we're doing. We're not sending anything out over the air. We've already got the time set in there. We want to make sure that we are monitoring everything so that we can see what comes across the screen. So in this very old TNC, that's monitor 4. Everything else is pretty much basically there. So remember, everything I type here is just me typing to the little black box and the little black box answering. So I'm going to set our path 
to CQ via AR Amateur Radio ISS. That'll use whatever call sign the International Space Station is using. Okay, so there's another packet coming in, so the ISS is just becoming to, just getting to come into range. So what we're going to do is I have kind of preloaded my little uh, information here with my latitude and longitude and my name and location and my grid square, which is fairly common in satellite work. So I'm just going to copy that. Oops, shouldn't have pasted. Hopefully I can still do that. Oops, let's see if we can... No, just got rid of that. That wasn't good. Uh, this is what happens when you don't script. So we won't save that. We'll go open it again. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to copy that this time. And then what I will do is I'll go into what's called converse mode. or So we'll do CONV. Now we're not talking to the black box. Anything I send from my keyboard will be transmitted over the radio. So you'll hear it go out. And you heard it get repeated. We didn't decode it for some reason. We may just have got a little scratchy signal there or something. But I heard it the first time, which was me transmitting, and the second time should have been the ISS repeating it. So we'll try it again. Didn't hear a repeat that time, but we will as it gets more a little higher on the horizon. There's one from KJ7 IOC. So I'll see if he can copy me. I just sent him KJ7 IOC. This is in 7HQR QSL. I think I'll lock the caps on there for a little bit of clarity. So what we're seeing on the screen is whatever I type or send and whatever I decode coming back in from the International Space Station. I don't see anything back from him. I'll shoot my information up there again. One of the things you can do is turn a command on, on called pass all which defeats the error checking and shows everything that the modem thinks it's got, whether it was legit or not. So let's do a control C. It takes us out of the converse mode. There's another one from KB9 IQX and we'll do pass all on. And then again, CONV to get back in the converse mode and send my position here again. So there is something from KK6 OTJ to me. I'll let him know I got that packet. So you can see this happens pretty quickly depending on the length of the pass. Got to be able to get some call signs in there quickly if you want. So you'll see some things not correct. That call sign's probably not UG7NR. So we'll probably go turn the pass all back on or off because that's just going to give us erroneous data. Back into converse mode. Should be just about right overhead right now. There's Spring Valley, California. I'm using a 
just an online viewer that shows me about where the International Space Station is and typically what their view would be at this point if they're looking down towards Earth. Don't know where that is, but uh, starting to go away from us a little bit there. I think some of the programs that are being used, the terminal programs, are automatically populated with what call signs they heard, so it's easier for the operator to just look at it and hit send. I'm just uh, manually typing in whatever uh, contact I want to try to make, so I have to be fairly quick at getting the call sign and getting it in there. And I think it's uh, gone down quite a bit to where our signal's going to be a little tougher to get in there. Uh, go take a look here re real quick. And there's a place you can look online. drag that over here for you. So there's some maps of call signs that have been heard as well as a list. Oh, I got heard several times on the last pass. There we are. That was the last pass one hour 13 minutes ago. Uh, that's the uh, by view information. So maybe the latest stuff is not up here yet. But you can check to see if you made it into the satellite or through the International Space Station this way. And you can uh, hold some quite a while. So here's a couple of the ones uh, earlier today. And these are people that heard my call sign and replied back to me. So that's a valid uh, contact there. And I'll either get a QSL card or they'll do it online. And uh, it's out of range now. But uh, in a nutshell, that's what it takes. I'm going to do a control C here to get back to the command mode. And I think I can uh, monitor the stations that were heard on that last little uh, pass. So I can get their call signs off of there pretty easy. And it's just that easy. Uh, 25 watt radio, very, very old uh, pack rat. PK-232 uh, TNC or modem and a homemade antenna up uh, 40 feet on the tower that's just an omnidirectional antenna that does fairly well going up in the air as well as uh, out to the side. So catch the, the satellites and the ISS as it passes over. So thanks for your, your uh, interest. You too can use your packet stuff to work through the ISS and work other people fairly easily. 7-3.